Hi everyone, so today we're going to be looking at the economic implications of psychology and this is something we've talked about before when we're evaluating different bits of research we can say it has a positive economic implication or a negative one. So this should be familiar to you but we need to think about it in the context of research methods because we can be asked to apply it in that way. So we're going to be looking at identifying different bits of psychological research and whether they have a benefit or a devalue of the, of, econ of the economy. And then also explaining and thinking about at least two examples of psychological research. And it's important that whilst we whilst it's worth knowing that we can prepare to some degree with this, so we know that we could be our say about the economic implications of attachment research. Sometimes the questions can be more specific and sometimes the questions can be very general. So you need to be able to just think about generally how we apply economic implications and then consider how that might link to um, your specific question. So when we're talking about implications, we're talking about whether psychological research benefits or has a negative effect on economy. And it can have a negative effect or a positive effect on four different things. It can have an effect on the NHS, on the government, on the workplaces and on individuals. So if we just briefly discuss those, the NHS costs money to run and the government pay for that, the upkeep of the NHS. But the only way the government are able to keep up the NHS and pay for the NHS is because individuals work hard and pay taxes to the government who are then able to fund the NHS. So the NHS is costly and so if we can make that more cost efficient by say creating effective treatments or diagnosing people effectively then we can have a positive economic impact because the NHS is spending less money. The government spend lots of money on the NHS, on supporting people who are, um, who are out of work, who um, are supporting our schools, for example. And so that all costs money. And again, if people are in work and maybe not receiving benefits, then that has a positive impact on the economy because the government can spend more money on other things such as the NHS. It has a there's an economic impact on workplaces as well, because if people are in work, then that means that they're getting more um, people, individuals are getting paid um, and that keeps the economy going. But equally, if people are, if you're having to pay people to be on sick leave because they're not able to come into work, that obviously also costs you money and that's not good. And then for an individual, we've got the idea that an individual, it costs, it, they have to pay for things in life. So things that you want to buy, food um, or services or clothes. And so an individual costs money um, and also has to have money in order to survive in this world. So therefore, we individuals cost money and also they put money into the economy, which is always positive. So if individuals spend, that helps the economy to grow. Think about right now, for example, in the coronavirus, less people are um, paying for things. So like we're not going out and eating meals um, and that costs the restaurants money, which are paying workplaces. And that means the government are having to support the workplaces and that costs the government money because the government are having to pay everyone who's on furlough. And that has an impact because then that means they can't pay the NHS. So there's a big link to all this. Um, they all kind of link together and that's OK. So when we're talking about um, research, it's really important um, and when we're trying to answer these questions that we make sure we refer to these four things explicitly where possible. You don't need to refer to all of them and actually a good answer might not necessarily refer to all of them because they don't always have an impact on everyone. But a good answer will refer to some of these. So let's have a look. Let's think about memory research then. Memory research is really effective for the government and that's because memory research has looked into eyewitness testimony and that has that research has helped to reduce the amount of wrongful arrests that are taking place and that's saving the government money by not having to pay for prison costs for incorrectly identified suspects so for more prisoners to be in prison or not having to pay for the compensation of putting people into prison or wrongfully convicting people. And because the prisons are paid for by the government, that's why the government are saving money due to um, memory research. 
Similarly, workplaces, so one workplace is the police force and they're able to make better use of their time by getting accurate eyewitness testimonies so they're not chasing the wrong people or asking the wrong questions and therefore that saves money by not having to pay for cases to go on longer than they should have done. So both of these um, save this piece, these research have saved the government and workplaces lots of money. So you can see here that we could write a really good answer about how these link to how, how uh, memory research has um, helped save the government and workplaces money. So we're going to look in a minute at uh, how we can apply that to a question, but I'm going to give you another example. So psychopathology research, I've got an example that links to all of these. So the government, if we research into the definitions of abnormality and we're able to correctly diagnose patients accurately, so people who do have mental health organ, um, disorders are diagnosed and diagnosed correctly and people who haven't got mental health disorders but need support are also diagnosed effectively. And because of that, that means the government don't waste money on paying for ineffective treatment. So the cost of it is that there is the benefit of it is that we're not wasting money on treatments that aren't effective. We're not giving someone who has schizophrenia antidepressants because we've accidentally diagnosed them with depression. This saves the NHS money because the NHS are the ones who are giving out the treatment and so it's reducing the likelihood of relapse if the treatments are effective. So if we're treating people with depression with the right treatment, so antidepressants, then that means they're less likely to uh, relapse and that means the NHS don't have to pay for more therapy on top of what they've already had to pay for. And then that saves the workplaces money because people are going back to work because they're able to work, they feel supported, they've had treatment and they feel like they can get better and go back to work. And that means that workplaces are saving money because they're not having to pay for people on sick leave. And that means that the individuals who are supported are able to better recover and they spend more time in society, which supports the economy by buying goods and services and the money that they make from being able to work goes back into the economy. So you can see here that when I've been talking about this, we've been really looking at how they might apply to these four things, but also the explicitness of how it applies to money. And that's what's really important. If I just take this example for a second about the government, I've said that I've, ex I've identified a particular bit of psychological research, so the definitions of abnormality, and said that that's going, if we've got the definitions of abnormality right, then we're getting a correct diagnosis. Now, this would be an OK answer, but we haven't really referred to anything about money. So you're not going to get marks for this type of question unless you refer to money. So the second part of this sentence is the really important bit because I've explained why they are getting more money or why they are getting less money or what are the benefits to this research in terms of money. So in terms of money, in this case, they're not wasting money. So they've got more money to spend. So it's really about the money side of it. Who's spending money or who's getting more money um, and then why? And you must say why. So say, same again with, uh, say, the individuals here. They're able to better recover, so they spend more time in society. Fine, but how does that link to money? You're going to say because it's about buying goods and services, so they're spending money in the like local economy. And because they're able to work, they're getting money so they can spend more money in society. Think about like right now, as I said, we're not spending that much money because we're not going out and buying goods and services. So the economy is shrinking because there's not as much money being put back into the economy. OK, so it's really important here that you refer to those. And the types of questions you get are discuss how uh, research into memory has affected has an impact on the economy and what's really important is that you can refer to these as positive um, economic impacts or negative there's no one way or the other so you could say that research might be having a negative impact as well if we were to take psychological research as an example you could talk about the negative impact of it because you could go the opposite way if we don't find if we don't have a correct diagnoses of mental health issues, then that means the government are wasting money on paying for ineffective treatment. So you can turn it around as well. There's not really one way or the other. It doesn't matter which way you put it. Hope that video is helpful for you.